It's good to be back so soon making another video for you guys, and thankfully, it's about something worth celebrating. Myth the Fallen Lords released on November 25th, 1997, and has turned 25 years old today. With the passing of this quarter century mark, we thought we'd share some insightful facts about its soundtrack and direct you towards some previously unreleased music. If you've never heard the Myth soundtrack, don't fret. It often gets overshadowed by its big brothers, Destiny and Halo, in terms of video game fame. I will stand firm though and argue that Myth is actually a good game. In fact, it was placed in the top 50 highest rated PC games of all time until this year, which is 2022 if you're watching from the future. It was remarkable for its time, and was even the debut game for some well-known industry vets like Joseph Staten, Paul Bertone, Chris Barrett, and Max Hoberman. In addition to its niche audience, Myth's OST has been routinely difficult, if not impossible, to obtain at various points in time. Currently, there's no way to purchase the soundtrack digitally anymore, and physical copies sell so sparingly, it took us nearly a year of checking resale venues to finally track down a suitable copy for collection purposes. If you're in a similar boat and are finding it difficult to find high quality or satisfactory versions of these tracks, I'm happy to announce today that we've posted the entire Lossless Myth soundtrack over at Atlix Music's page, including four previously unreleased tracks. These unreleased tracks include The Country Song from the Mission A Traitor's Grave, Across the Gyul's Mission Theme, Ambush at Devil's Overlook, which also plays during the victory screen, and finally, the in-game version of the Siege of Madrigal, which is different from its Easter egg counterpart and the version present on the soundtrack CD. The version in-game is written by Michael Salvatore. It features some layers of strings and is locked to 97 BPM, while the soundtrack version, performed by Marty O'Donnell, is limited to its piano performance but contains rubato, meaning that the piano notes are allowed to fluctuate off of the sampled 97 BPM in order to maintain flow and allow the performance to breathe. Let's take a look and hear the differences. It's easy to make the assumption that the strings were removed from the soundtrack version due to trouble maintaining pace with the rubato fluctuations. Samplers of the 90s were notoriously difficult to clock correctly across changing time values. Another odd quirk that the Myth soundtrack has is the addition of small pops and clicks at the start of some tracks. Here's an example so you can see what I'm talking about. Specifically, half of the 19 tracks have this mastering artifact present in their disc pressing. The Myth Total soundtrack, a more complete reissue that released in 1999, goes on to fix all of these except for track 3, track 5, track 12, and track 14. In addition, while the raw files aren't ready to be shared today, we're going to be providing high quality uncompressed scans of the artwork to these CDs. Previously, the preservation of this art was rather poor, and there haven't been new scans put online since the early days of the internet. We're setting a higher bar with 1200 DPI scans of all the artwork, delivering a resolution of more than nine times what was previously available online for most of these images. We hope to share more details soon. And to close, we'd like to wish Myth the Fallen Lords a happy birthday, and hope you're willing to check out the soundtrack over on Owen's page. Nothing beats hearing the soundtrack at its 1410 kbps 44.1 kilohertz glory. Also, hey, take two, why don't you put Myth on Steam, you fucking-